All right, uh, good evening, and this is the last of the uh, structured trial videos. So uh, I'm just going to go over what uh, some of the things we did in uh, structured trial five. Okay, so uh, one of the most important things that we did was we um, transferred uh, money back to the home office in two different ways. Okay, and uh, uh, this is an important thing for you to remember because at the beginning of the game, you spend a whole bunch of time sending money uh, from home office over to the operating areas because you know that's where your initial capital is, and uh, you send it to the operating areas to get things started. And then what happens later on in the game is home office runs out of money, uh, so you need to start sending some back. And uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, and this is covered in the manual in one of the appendix. So there's a couple of different ways of sending money. But I'm going to show you a couple, uh, at least two ways to do it here. Okay. So if you recall back in the first period when we sent money uh, from uh, home office to the area, uh, it was captured in this account called subsidiary control. Okay. And in the areas, uh, that corresponding amount was in uh, what's called home office control. So when you sent money from home office to an area, it came out of the cash in home office, went into the cash in the area, and then the corresponding accounts were uh, subsidiary control and home office control. So in the first uh, thing in, in period five, I asked you to send a million dollars from China to home office and it says, no, use a capital transfer. So you're doing almost exactly what you did in the first period, but just in reverse now. So we're going from area to home office. So if we look at China at that home office control account, it's now 49 million. So if you recall in the first period, we sent 50 million from home office to China. Well, we sent a million back. Okay, so what happens now is uh, the home office control is uh, reduced by a million dollars and the cash account is reduced by a million dollars. So that gives us a tiny line of credit in uh, in China, no big deal. But, uh, you know, cash is added to the uh, cash account in home office and that subsidiary control account is reduced to 79 million. So you can send money back that way uh, up until the time that this account, that home office control account, becomes zero, okay? And once that becomes zero, you can no longer use that method of sending it back. It just, it won't even take it, okay? And if that is zero, then the chances are pretty good that this account retained earnings is positive. In this case, it's not, it's minus 14, but let's say that was positive 14. So another way to send back money uh, is to send earnings back to home office, okay? So we would, the same sort of thing happens. The retained earnings account in China is reduced and the retained earnings account in home office is increased and the cash account in China is reduced and the cash account in home office is increased, okay? So that's, that's the sort of the third way to do that. And, uh, you know, getting your, your retained earnings in home office to be positive uh, is required if you're going to pay dividends. Now, dividends aren't always available in the game, but sometimes in later periods they are. Um, so, you know, you can pay you can pay dividends in lieu of investing in other group uh, growth opportunities late in the game if it's permitted in the, in that particular run. I'm not a big fan of dividends. I think you should always reinvest in in growth and uh, and and go from there. Okay, so that's uh, sort of method sort of one A and one B, if you will, and that's covered in the appendix of the manual. Uh, the second thing that I did is I asked you to send a million dollar service payment. Uh, from your home office to company one's home office. So you're not really sending money back yourself here. What we're doing is we're just paying company one, and I'll show you how we can use that to send money back to home office too. But that's an income state uh, statement uh, transfer. So essentially what you're doing uh, is, if you look at the income statement, you can see a miscellaneous expense of a million dollars. So we're paying uh, company one a million dollars. So we're taking it out of our cash and home office, sending it to their cash and home office, and uh, it, it's recorded as a miscellaneous expense for us and a miscellaneous income for them. Okay, uh, so then that's a taxable income for them too. Now, 
you may use a service payment for a number of reasons. A service payment is typically, you know, if you breach a contract and you owe them some money, uh, you do that. Or if you're reimbursing them for shipping costs or something like that, you might do that. Uh, but it's never to be used for paying for product or licenses or anything like that. Okay, that's why I asked you to put in what you're doing, uh, because if it doesn't meet with, uh, with my approval, then I just delete it. Okay. Sometimes people think that when they ship a product to somebody else, they have to, you know, or they're receiving a product from somebody else, they have to send them a service payment. And uh, that's not the case. And in fact, if you do that, you end up paying twice for the product. So that's no good. Okay. So that's uh, what happens there with that service payment. Now, yourself, what you can do is you can actually use that service payment to your advantage too by sending money back to home office as a service payment. Okay. And uh, there's a spot in the program where it says make a service payment to home office. And essentially what you're doing is, again, sending cash back. And it appears as a miscellaneous expense in, say, China and a miscellaneous income in home office. And that's another way to send cash back. But remember, there's tax implications. But the tax implications can be good because if China is making gobs and gobs of money, then you know, having an extra expense there isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially since the tax rate is generally higher in China than it is in home office. So you're reducing a tax burden in China and, uh, you know, increasing the taxes paid in home office. And the chances are, you know, with home office always losing money, you're going to get a further, you might not have any taxes anyway, because you'll have the carryover from the last period plus whatever you made that period, that sort of thing. Okay, and the only limit on that is uh, the percentage of your home office control. Okay, so if your home office control account has money in it, then you can use the service payment option. Now, the home office control isn't affected by sending a service payment. Okay, again, it's just a cash and an expense, but uh, the limit is 10 or 20% of your home office control. So check with me to see what the limit is. But, uh, you know, you can do that every period as a means of, of sending money back. But as soon as that home office control is exhausted, that is no longer an option. Okay, so that's sort of the third way to send back money. So just to reiterate, you can send back money to home office by doing a capital transfer. So just reversing what we did in period one. And that's what I asked you to do for the first case. Or you can send back earnings. And no tax implications on that. You can do that up to the point where the retained earnings account becomes uh, zero. Or you can send a service payment back from home office. And to review those, and I think I even put journal entries in the manual, you can take a look at the manual and see what that's all about. Okay, so that's it for period five. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.